Yes, ma'am. All righty. Welcome to our pre-meeting. I will go around and see what councilors have questions or anything on. Councilor Zadi. Nope. Councilor Numella. I have. I don't have questions per se, but. <laughs> um, I'll just say that I did attend the work session last week for Dr. Cog, and um, that was helpful because we were able to get a lot of questions asked about just as we're looking at these um, uh, overall mitigation measures and how the state greenhouse gas rule is going to be applied. Um, it's in essence, the um, mitigation measures that are proposed by the state, which include things like adding more, you know, providing for more dense development or um, reduced parking ratios or just the number of, a wide number of things. They are voluntary. So it's up, it, and then I think a lot of the cities in the region were kind of happy to see that they had some choice on how to apply these um, with Westminster being ahead of the game with a lot of these mitigation measures. It was um, helpful to also understand that um, we wouldn't be necessarily required to go further. It's just, you know, we, we are setting a good pace for the rest of the region, actually. Um, yeah, so it was... Um, I'll shut up my phone. My <laughs> husband might need something. <laughs> <clears throat> Go down the stairs. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, it, it, more to come on that, but I think that, and there's all uh, there's I think a fair number of cities too that are interested in, um, you know, well, how do we uh, ensure that we're actually getting results for uh, reducing our greenhouse gas? And um, so that's something that Dr. Cog and their staff are working on for us to help identify, right? How is this going to be measured? What assumptions are going into um, the um, you know, into the policy work and into the measures that are being that are being suggested for folks. So, um, yeah, so all of this needs to be determined by October when the uh, the new regional transportation or the regional transportation plan needs to be updated to be consistent with the greenhouse gas rules. So, more to come. Mm. Interim City Manager Jody, we have July 25th. Is Dr. Cog's on our list. It is on the agenda for the 25th, I believe. Yeah. Thank you. That was very important, Tim. Mayor Pro Tim. The only thing I wanted to bring up to the group, um, it's been a couple of weeks since I had this <clears throat> conversation, but I haven't seen you guys. So I had got a phone call from uh, Commissioner Kraft um, about the absolutely in the round table and wanted some context around it. And they shared um, basic, basically the conversation we had. Um, she was of the mindset that, you know, she was, would have hoped that we would have had a conversation with somebody from the group before we left it. And I told her the same thing that the group talked about as far as it doesn't mean that we would never go back. We just would want to know for, for the dollars that we put in. Um, one thing that we did discuss with her that maybe staff could look into for us is right before uh, election and before we joined the round table, the head of the airport had come and presented for council at the time. Um, the one thing I told uh, Commissioner Kraft Tharp that I thought might be useful is to have that same um, presentation for this group and any updates since there's four new members um, and that might be of value. Um, whether or not we join the round or to just run the airport and you know would give this group an opportunity to ask any questions and maybe add additional context so I did um, let her know that I would let the group know that she had re reached out and you know not necessarily reconsider but um, it, it potentially reminds me to chair of the, the round table about you know our concerns uh, moving forward, so I'll leave it to whether or not the group is open to that. If the majority is, I'd be open to having a conversation. But 
Um, I stand that until we see that we're going to actually get something for it. I wouldn't want to change anything, but I said I would bring it back to the group, so I'm doing so. Councilor Emmons? I don't have anything. I've been out the last two weeks. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, not much last week since we were all together several <laughs> evenings. Um, I missed you guys this weekend. I, you know, uh, this week, uh, coming, uh, just a shout out tomorrow is uh, July business after hours for the chamber at Coca-Cola Brewing Company. Uh, and then um, F, uh, Parks Rec Library open space on uh, Thursday, two weeks ago, they had a special meeting and finished up their goals. They are very efficient and effective at that. So um, that will be coming forward to council. They didn't have any bylaws that they needed to update in their yet. So that's all I had for tonight. Dr. Baker? Um, I sent out today, mayors and commissioners um, are meeting on the 36th quarter this uh, Thursday. So I just sent the agenda, everything that we're going to be looking at. So if you see something that you want me to ask a question about or whatever, just went ahead and forwarded it. It's easier. And then I'll let you know whatever there's any actions taken from them. Well, anything else for the good of the other city manager? Anybody? I can't see down there. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I just did. <clears throat> One of your agenda items this evening is a proposed new ordinance that would regulate occupancy of medians within our city. And tonight we have available uh, to answer any questions that city council might have. Um, both Mark Hoff, one of our prosecuting attorneys, is present here this evening. And as is Mr. Klein, our transportation engineer, you know that I think Chief Hobart and our lead prosecutors in the back as well. So we, we have uh, staff available if city council has any questions about the proposed ordinance. I saw somebody on one of the medians that I heard was, and I just thought they were going to fall off and get in, hit my car. I think it's long overdue. Thank you. Um, I will say from here, we have a first executive session tonight after the meeting. Uh, and I will say this from the dais during updates. Um, <clears throat> I think we will come out, we won't go immediately into the second um, executive session come out. And if anybody's out there, they can come in, but we may have an announcement to make after that um, executive session. If not, I'll also share at the dais tonight um, where they might find the information tomorrow morning. If there's nothing else, go do your Zumba or something to keep you up and going tonight. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome to tonight's meeting of July 11th, 2022. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councillor Baker. Here. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Present. Councillor Emmons. Present. Councillor Azadi. Here. Mayor McNally. Here. Councillor Nermella. Here. And Councillor Seymour. Here. That brings us to consideration of minutes. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of June 27, 2022 meeting as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of June 27, 2022. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Could I have Chaplain Robbins and Karen down front? Well, good evening, everybody. This is Chaplain Robbins and his wife, Karen, and he has been our police chaplain for 23 years, and I got that wrong at the 20th anniversary, so Pastor Sen, I apologize. I think I gave you only 11 minutes or something. I don't know what I was thinking. Craziness. But Chaplain Larry Robbins has served the Westminster Police Department for 23 years. Chaplain Robbins has participated in training with the Jefferson County Motor Cops, driving instruction with the State Patrol, and accompanying the SWAT team on their competitive team, team run through the mountains. Chaplain Robbins spent time at Ground Zero in New York City during September of 2001, supporting the NYPD among the rubble of the Twin Towers. He supported the Westminster Police during the Jessica Ridgeway tragedy and was a stable for many years throughout the department. Chaplain Robbins' last day was June 10th of um, this year. Chaplain Robbins, we have for you, this acknowledges that Larry Robbins, police chaplain for the city of Westminster, has been recognized for 23 years of outstanding service to the Westminster Police Department. And I know we have some officers and past officers here in the crowd. I know I heard this, I saw tears, I heard tears. And so you will be missed. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you to the council for this honor. I'm humbled by it. It is my distinct honor and privilege to serve Police Department and the City of Westminster for these years. Going into it back those many years ago, I had no idea how I would be in this place today and have served this long, have the opportunity that I've had. So I'm very humbled by that. Um, I think it was all back in 1997, I think it was. There's three uh, specific individuals and some others joined them in, uh, in prayer and uh, desiring to see something happen at the Police Department and asking God to to lead and uh, those three ones here this evening, but that was uh, uh, Sergeant Tim Carlson and Sergeant Jeff Sill and Sergeant Bob Dowling is here tonight. And they were very instrumental in starting the chaplain program, first time that uh, thing happened in Westminster. From that, uh, developed the, the chaplain program and uh, support from, I want to make sure I get all the other people listed here that I wanted to mention, but tremendous support from my pastor, uh, Will Sand, who allowed me and was excited for me to spend as many hours as I did here at the uh, police department over those many, many years, as well as the uh, first few years with Pastor Matt Olson. Uh, and then a special support from, great support from Chief Dan Montgomery and, and Chief Lee Burke and Tim Carlson and Norm Hobart as well, who's here tonight as well. Great support from all these, as well as tremendous support from all the police officers. Uh, great love for uh, that, they're my family, the police officers. I've come to love them, and they've given me tremendous love over the years as a result. 
uh, tremendous support as well from uh, my wife uh, for many years before she passed away 10 years ago. And then the last five years, my wife who supported me and loves the cops as well. So we, I appreciate so much all the, the, uh, the love that they've, they've given to me and support from both directions, the police, but also uh, enjoyed loving them. Uh, they're special, uh, part of that family. They are my family and I, they always will be. I appreciate that so much. But I wanna give all the praise to uh, Lord Jesus Christ for whatever it was accomplished over the past 24, 23 plus years. And God be the glory, great things he did. I just appreciate him so much in allowing me to, to serve in this capacity. Uh, I can say without reservation that in my nearly 50 years of, of ministry, that the last portion, that being at the police department, uh, has been the most uh, fulfilling, fruitful, profitable time of my entire uh, entire ministry. So I serving the people. So I give God the glory uh, for all of that. So. Trevor Matarasso is now over the uh, chaplain's ministry, as well as Chris Knudsen, the new chaplain I've been working with for the past year or so. He's in Europe right now with his family, uh, traveling, doing some business there, but uh, he's going to do a great job, and I look forward to God blessing many, many more years with the chaplain program. Thank you very much. Thank you, and Karen, thank you for giving of your time of him to be able to serve our folks in Blue. Thank you. Thank you. That brings us to public comment. We only have one speaker signed up and that is John Palmer. Mr. Palmer, come on down. Welcome. Good evening. I have a couple of questions here, or actually some comments and questions. Uh, I'm getting a lot of outreach from people in my community wanting to know when we'll be having another town hall so we can all get some questions answered. So hopefully you can work that into your schedule. Uh, my next concern is I put in a phone call over two and a half weeks ago to Heather Ostetter about, it essentially has got to do with the Uplands project and the pollution over there. I've yet to hear anything, crickets, two and a half weeks. Is that acceptable? Is that normal for our, our city staff? I would think not. Uh, my next concern, open space, cons uh, the sunset open space down off 80th and approximately Stewart. There's an individual that lives on Stewart that has taken upon themselves to encroach into our open space and not just a little, their backyard is expanded into the open space uh, probably 50 foot wide by 20 feet deep. That's our road space. I brought this forward to Tomas, the Parks and Rec guy, eight weeks ago. I've talked to uh, uh, Mr. Osselberger about it. I got this song and dance from Eric about how well we had to have it surveyed. This was probably at least a month ago. It doesn't take a month to get a survey of what the city's property is and what the city's property isn't. That This just didn't happen overnight. This has gone on for years now. Why is it not being rectified? Why do we have people occupying our open space, using it as a business? They're using it as a firewood business. They drive in, there's loads of firewood in there, they drive out, not paying taxes on it. That's our property, not his. When will we be getting that addressed? <clears throat> A next major concern is federal and the Boulder Turnpike. If you're trying to get on 36, the Boulder Turnpike westbound from federal, I don't care if it's, if you're northbound on federal, southbound on federal, but getting onto the Boulder Turnpike headed west, there's a big sign there that says Westminster. 
There's a homeless encampment of 20, 25 people over there. Why is that not being addressed? And the reason I say that is it's not about the homeless. It's about, for example, if, if my grandson is driving late at night and is trying to get on the Boulder Turnpike off of Federal and one of these homeless trespassers is on the on-ramp and he runs over him, do you think that's not going to scar him for life? Any of you, your wives, husbands, children, why is that allowed to go on? Now, I've been told, well, that's CDOT, that's CDOT easement. Well, it's right behind the Westminster sign. Doesn't look good for our community when the first thing you see when you come into the city at Federal and the Boulder Turnpike, a homeless encampment. It's dangerous, not only for them, but for anybody that's trying to access the highway legally on one of those ramps. Again, needs to be addressed. It's trespassing, it's not homeless, it's trespassing. It needs to be addressed. Would like follow-up comments or follow up on all four of those issues, please, at some point. Thank you. Thank you. Interim City Manager Andrews will have someone get back to him with all the things that he talked about. As far as the next town hall, uh, during the summer, we're going to be doing a couple of pop-up tents at some of, and if you guys can look at your calendars, is it August? Sixth is our next one. Do you have which park we're going to be at? We, we tried to pick two places for the movies in the park that we haven't been for the other town halls, but we're going to make ourselves available for an hour or so before the movie. Mayor, that is uh, Big Dry Creek Park, 1700 West, 128th. The movie in the park starts at 7 o'clock, and that's Adam's Family 2. Ooh, and which date? That is, uh, you're correct, August, August 6th, 6th, Saturday. Okay. That, that's where we'll be next. And I know we have another one in August also. On the 13th, we have one in August too. So, okay. And we'll get to you the rest of your questions. Yes, they're all in our activities guide. They are, that, those won't be broadcast because we're gonna be in the open space areas and um, in a park, and so no, but anybody's welcome to be there. And they don't have to stay for a movie, um, but we will, we're just going to be there. And we will answer questions, talk to people, do whatever. Either that or email them to us so we can start getting them answered. Thank you. Um, and did we have any phone calls or? Anything? No, we had no phone calls or um, voicemails. Thank you. That takes us to city council comment. Wait a minute. I always miss you, city officials. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Councilors. In recognition of the long nights uh, that City Council had last week, interviewing candidates for City Manager, I'll keep my comments tonight very brief. I would like to reiterate uh, the thanks to Chaplain Robbins for his service um, to our community. Um, the people you have helped um, are too numerous to count, but each and every one of them uh, knows how you've reached them and the difference that you've made, including myself. And on behalf of all police staff and all city staff, thank you for what you've done for us. And, um, and again, thank you on behalf of the community we serve. That's all my comments tonight, Mayor. Thank, thank you. you. Now, City Council comment. Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, first, quickly, I would like to thank uh, Parks and Rec and the Fire Department for all the work they do over the 4th of July to make sure <clears throat> that our residents can celebrate our country together. Um, next, I would like to give my personal thanks to uh, Pastor Robin. Um, I've got to be good friends with Pastor Robbins over my eight years of being involved in, in different uh, running for council and just doing things in the community or volunteering at the police department. I know how important it is to our men and women that they have somebody who they can go to when they have spiritual needs. And so your service, um, it's really, there's, there's no uh, cost that can pay for such a thing um, that you would give of your time for, 
for the folks over there. And I know how much that uh, job meant to you and um, <clears throat> what a good man you are. So I just want to give my personal thank you to you both for your friendship and your service to our city. Councilor Seymour. Hey, Madam Mayor, I too, I want to uh, reiterate what Mayor Pro Tem said about our staff during the fourth, and it starts long before that as well. Um, our staff that uh, does so much work uh, before the sun comes up until long after the sun goes down with the sparkler event. It is a premier national event and the work that goes into that is is incredible. So, and then right when they get done with that, they get to roll into the fourth celebration. It was great to see all the people in the park this year. Um, it was a fabulous celebration. So thanks for all those. Uh, um, if, if you didn't weather the slight rainstorm, I'll have to challenge you next year to be prepared because after it blew through, it was a fabulous evening. And I too want to uh, reiterate the fact that uh, my thanks to Chaplain Robbins. Uh, uh, I saw him uh, in his duties before I got involved in council and I know he's uh, spoken of highly in the entire community. So thank you. Councilor Numella. Um, I also, not to pile on, but I really enjoyed the 4th of July event and I really appreciate what staff did to put that on and my kids loved it. So thank you um, for continuing to make great opportunities for families and um, for all residents. Um, I, and I do just, I am interested to hear when our next um, community meeting will be. So I'm hoping we can, I know there's, it's a different format and opportunity to come and talk to us personally at these events that we'll be attending, but I know that folks have a lot of questions and I just wanted to, with respect to those questions in the meantime, <clears throat> uh, just remind folks that they can go to the Access Westminster website um, and submit questions there. I, I'd be interested to know if the community feels like that's a, a he's <laughs> evidently mis it doesn't work. Okay. So that's just, well, input for our staff, right? If that's what we've set up for community members, but they don't feel like they can use it. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Councilor okay. Zadi, anything tonight? Okay. I, I just wanted to share um, everything everybody else has. I, I ditto and Chaplain Robbins, you know, when 2001 hit and it was an election year. I had just gotten elected. Uh, just after my name got on a ballot, our daughter was in that first tower hit and she got out, but six of her employees didn't. And you um, shared your experience back there to help us share with her. So that is where our relationship really began. And I can't thank you enough. And Karen, again, thank you for all of your patience. And I know he's gone a lot with all of his duties. And so just thanks for being part with him because you're as much of the help and love as he is. So we thank you too, so very much. Um, this last weekend, uh, Vintage Baseball took place and Parks, Rec and Library staff, I can't thank them enough because they give us Wolf Run. Um, and since we're a nonprofit with the Historical Society, uh, we don't have to pay, but we do all of the things, everybody has to double check everything and they just made it a great day. The field was ready. Um, and I really want to thank Councillor Seymour for heckling while the women were protesting for the right to vote because we do play by the 1870 rules. And as we were getting out and ready for the first protest with our signs, he was right there in my face protesting, get back in the kitchen where you belong. Um, <laughs> Um, but Rich Newman, especially from Parks and Rec, um, and Leah, I have to give a, a double shout out to because we had three things going on that day. We had vintage baseball, they had the tours for historic Westminster, and there was a summer festival that the folks down um, on 73rd put on, but one of those members um, couldn't finish that job and Rich Newman stepped in and he didn't have to because that was not part of the city job, but he and Leah did and made sure everything was ready to go. A great event. Yes, it was hot, but a great event. And um, we lost our game 10 to four, but it was fun. <laughs> so thanks to everyone. Uh, that brings us to 
item 10A, Councillor's Bill number 26. Councillor Emmons. I move to pass Councillor's Bill number 26 on first reading, adding section 10-1-29 of the Westminster Municipal Code concerning sitting, standing, or walking in or on medians. Sorry, I moved to pass it. One second. Um, Mayor Pro Tem. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass Councillor's Bill number 26. Um, is there any further discussion? Uh, Mayor, if I could. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Dave Frankel, City Attorney. Uh, I wanted to first thank the, the staff that have been involved in drafting this ordinance for your consideration. They are here tonight in the room if you have questions of them. Uh, included are Brian Fuselay, our lead prosecutor, and Mark Hoff, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney, as well as Heath Klein, our Transportation Engineer, and uh, Interim Police Chief uh, Norm Hobart. Also, thank you, uh, Chief, for your support through drafting this proposed ordinance. Um, generally, the proposed ordinance is addressing the, the safety of medians and occupancy of the medians by pedestrians. And I, I think it might be helpful if Heath Klein could address City Council just to expand upon um, the issue here and why we are proposing this uh, for your consideration. Sounds like a great idea. Come on down. And while he's coming down, I do know I missed the update on city manager recruitment. I'll I'll do that when we get to the end of items um, 10C2. Welcome. Welcome. Or hello. <clears throat> Good evening, council. Good evening, Mayor. Keith Klein, city transportation engineer. So tonight we have been looking at pedestrian safety when they when occupying the medians in our roadways. We are proposing right now to <clears throat> enforce that any median that is 48 inches or less is unsafe for pedestrians to occupy. That will be 106 of the 269 medians that we can regulate to about 39% of them. So it leaves 61% that can still be occupied if they are done so in a safe manner. Uh, other things that we are looking at is the how level the medians are as well. And so that is not specifically called out as of, of the number locations, but is will be something that our police officers can observe in the real world and make that call. So we don't have a number today to tell you how many of the medians are designed <clears throat> with a with the kind of uneven surface. It is our standards to have stamped pattern concrete at the medians especially at the noses where uh, typically you have the left turn vehicles. And so most often than not, those are not designed for pedestrians to be located at. We do have three medians that are designed for pedestrians to travel along the median. And that is at 118th place between Quitman and Bradburn Boulevard in the Bradburn subdivision. And then <clears throat> our uh, downtown, uh, in, on Eaton Street, we have the ability for pedestrians to be in the median there. Other locations <clears throat> that we have, uh, we have eight locations for pedestrian refuge islands, which allows a pedestrian to stand in the median while trying to cross a roadway. And that would be like at uh, 88th and Sheridan on the both the west and the east side. There's going to be the little noses of the medians and an actual ADA path to cross 88th Avenue, and as well as you know six other locations. Some of them are near I-25 and 144th, or I-25 and 136th Avenue. We have one at 121st in Huron, but uh, yes, overall we are looking the what this comes from studying the number of signs that often get struck. And we're seeing that on average, we're at 40 signs a year that are struck in the meetings. And so at any point that could be a pedestrian. We also see that 15 of our signal poles can be struck. Those are on the outside, not typically in the medians, but another just highlight of how important it is to always observe traffic if you're a pedestrian in our intersections and to 
you know, get away from the, the, the travel paths as quickly as you can. Uh, we also see about on average 20 street trees that get struck every year. And then we also lose about 80 street lights uh, annually, not all due to vehicular uh, accidents, but <clears throat> uh, still large numbers and just highlights the importance that you know, medians are not a place, a safe place to, to have pedestrians. Any questions for him, Sarah? On the um, pedestrian refuge, what is our minimum width for that? The minimum width now would be six foot wide, and uh, it needs to be at least six, so, so six foot and six foot. So six foot if uh, width here, but also uh, you need the 48 inches of clear for ADA and then the two feet for the detectable warning. So that's that comes up to that six feet. So basically six feet in all directions should be the minimum for a pedestrian refuge space. Okay. And so our existing pedestrian refuges uh, meet that? Yeah. The on 88th, I believe we're near 10 feet wide <clears throat> and then a six foot, basically the six foot would feel like the sidewalk going through. Thank you. Yep. Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. I actually just want to take a quick moment to thank staff for the hard work on this. I know this is a topic that you've been looking at and developing this plan for a number of years now to address the safety concerns. And so I appreciate seeing this come forward. Thank you. Councilor Izzati. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to, uh, just to clarify to anyone listening, uh, for the people's sake, that this ordinance is not a restriction of people's First Amendment rights to free speech. This is simply a public safety effort because when you have really narrow or really uneven surfaces, we're putting our residents at risk by not regulating that. But just to reiterate that this is really a, let's keep our people safe. Councilor Seymour. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I just had a comment and I appreciate the fact that um, staff taking into consideration the crowning on some of those locations because why they may meet the um, with the, the safety issues, they're just not safe to even barely walk across. So I appreciate the looking into that. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Baker. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nirmella. Yes. And Councillor Seymour. Yes. The motion passes on a 7 0 vote. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Emmons. Thank you, Mayor. I move based on the recommendation of the city manager to determine that the public interest will be best served by approving a negotiated amendment of the current concrete replacement project with Silva Construction Incorporated for the 2022 calendar year and authorize additional funding in the amount of $371,813.27 plus contingency of $202,933.67 for a total authorized expenditure not to exceed $2,433,833. Councilor Seymour. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass item 10B. Is there any further discussion? A roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Councilor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councilor Nirmella. Yes. Councilor Seymour. Yes. And Councilor Baker. Yes. The motion passes on a 7 0 vote. Thank you. That brings us to item C1. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. I move to authorize the reallocation of $200,000 from the New Street Light Program account to the Sheridan underpass at um, downtown account. Councilor Emmons. Second. Been moved and seconded to uh, approve item 10C1. Is there any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Councilor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councilor Nirmella. Yes. Councilor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem DeMott? Yes. The motion passes on a 7 0 vote. And is, I'm going to ask Chief real quick, is 
um, deputy chief in there? I mean, deputy um, city manager? Door? Would you um, text the person that's going to be on the first executive and let them know we're going to be early? Thank you. Uh, that brings us to item C2. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mary. I move to authorize the city manager to execute an amended construction manager general contractor contract with Concrete Express Inc. for additional construction services pertaining to the street and pedestrian lighting in the amount of two hundred thousand dollars for total expenditure, not to not amount not to exceed nine million five hundred eight eighty-seven thousand six hundred or sixty-one dollars. For the Sheridan Boulevard multimodal transportation improvement project. Mayor, uh, all right. Councillor Emmons. Second. You did well without glasses. You did you read that well. Um, is there any further discussion? Councillor Namella? Oh. Um, roll call, please. Councillor Azadi. Yes. Mayor McNally. Yes. Councillor Nermella. Yes. Councillor Seymour. Yes. Councillor Baker. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem DeMott. Yes. And Councillor Emmons. Yes. The motion passes on a 7-0 vote. Thank you. Um, before we get into uh, post meetings, I just do want to share tonight our first executive session up is personnel, ma personnel matter to discuss the next steps in city manager. We did meet um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday last week and interviewed seven people. Uh, we are going to meet with our team that has been helping us with our search. And that's who I needed to do. I thought we'd be here till 745. So um, I just need to alert them. We're going to be a little bit earlier. Uh, we are going to meet with them. As soon as that executive session is over, we will come back out. And if anybody's in the crowd, you may come in to, we're going to share a public statement. Uh, if you're not going to stay for that, just watch the city website tomorrow morning and it will state what I state publicly. Um, and so with that, we have cause for executive session. We do, Mayor. We have three executive sessions that are scheduled for this evening. The first one is a discussion of a personnel matter to discuss the next steps following the city manager candidate interviews that could be convened pursuant to Westminster Municipal Code 1113C1, Colorado Revised Statute 246402-4F1. And I will um, ask each counselor if you are willing to go into that executive session and you will hold everything confidential. Councilor Izzati? Yes. Councilor Namella? Yes. Councilor, or Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Um, Mayor McNally, yes. Uh, Councilor Emmons? Yes. Councilor Seymour? Yes. Councilor Baker? Yes, and I will. Thanks. The second executive session on the agenda for tonight is to discuss collective bargaining and the terms of a tentative agreement and to instruct negotiators pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 246-4024E and Westminster Municipal Code 1113C7. And I will ask the same question, um, Councillor Izzati? Yes. Councillor Namella? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Mayor McNally? Yes. Mayor uh, Councillor Emmons? Yes. Councillor Seymour? Yes. Councillor Baker. Yes, and I will. Third one. Thank you, Mayor. The third executive session for the evening is to discuss strategy and progress on a proposed economic development agreement with the Hafferty Development Company, LLC, and Rotsey Capital for the development of a city-owned parcel at West 104th Avenue and Westminster Boulevard, and to provide instructions to the city's negotiators pursuant to Colorado Revised Statute 246402-4E1, and Westminster Municipal Code 1113C4 and 7. Thank you. And again, I'll ask councillors. Um, Councillor Azadi? Yes. Councillor Numella? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Mayor McNally? Yes. Councillor Emmons? Yes. Councillor Seymour? Yes. Councillor Baker? Yes, and I will. Thank you. Um, we will adjourn this meeting and go into our first executive session. And again, I can't predict. I don't think it's going to be a long time, but if you want to stick around and hear what we might have to say in a little bit, um, do that. Otherwise, uh, check out the website for Sing in the Morning. The meeting's adjourned.
It's just scary. <laughs> yeah. It's all thrown off. Uh -oh. <laughs> Okay, um, we, we are not in executive session. Uh, we just finished our first one. Um, I just wanted to say it's been so far a delight um, in this process to work with these other six counselors. They um, were still able to laugh and um, do what we need to do. Uh, people share their concerns or things that they really um, highlight. And um, I just think that's important for community to know. But tonight, um, Westminster, your Westminster City Council is delighted to share with you the three candidates that are moving forward as our finalists for city manager. And the reason we're doing that tonight, because by state law, there's a 14 day window and that we have to meet and that clock starts now. Uh, our three finalists are Jody Andrews, acting city manager here in Westminster, Mark Freetag, city manager in Janesville, Wisconsin, and Jennifer Phillips, who recently served as city manager with the city of Bothell, Washington. Our next steps are, we're interviewing July 26th and 27th. We will have meet and greets for employees and citizens. Uh, posting will be on our city website in the morning with the three candidates. And as we set the dates and time for events, that's where you look. I'm sure it'll be on Facebook and other things, but we want people to know that the website is where for sure everything will be because we know people aren't on all the other realms. But um, that's as far as we are tonight. Um, we know we're bringing them in. We know we're having interviews. We know which days we're having the interviews. And the next steps are setting up the employee and citizen meet and greets. So stay tuned. Um, and uh, just so I don't forget, next week on the agenda, we need another executive session to finish all of this up. So that's our news. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs>
put it here from, in Colorado. Bunch of active people. Who they sell to? Akin. Well, now they're public, but when I was there, they sold to like one venture capital group to another venture capital group, uh, and then they're mm -hmm. public. Okay. Oh, 